Jack, we've just spoken off the air, and one thing I said to you, I thought that was one of the worst first half performances I've seen. But again, I was delighted with the second half and thought it was excellent. Well, yeah, I mean, I say what we said was that the, the challenge today was we had a major disappointment on Tuesday. Even though I thought Tuesday second half, the 43 minutes of the 45 minutes, they played ever so well and really showed a lot of um, courage and commitment to play the way we want to do it. On another day, we could have been three goals clear, an extra 9,000 in the bank and going for it. So when you take a knock like that and then you have to travel again and come in and you see the quality of the pitch, that was the challenge today because obviously... The pitch here is one, it's not a good pitch. And it, especially if you want to pass the ball, which we do. So it was a major challenge for them. And we threw the challenge down that, look, you've, you've got to understand, you've got to win on all conditions and we've got to dig in and we've got to work hard and do everything. And even though I didn't think we did very well first half, I think sometimes it's goals that change games. Mm. And they never really did anything great first half and neither did we. But we did concede two very poor goals. And as actually scoring goals is the hardest thing to do, it's always easier to defend. I'm very concerned about the number of goals we concede because I don't mind conceding goals when the opposition plays sparkling football, but we're actually conceding goals when the, you know, it's just not, <laughs> they shouldn't be going in the net. And so to finish up 2 0 down, was very disappointing for us. And we threw the challenge down to them. Our season either finishes here today because we're going to get wiped with the floor or we get some things about us and we, you know, we, we actually start becoming men, grow up and have a go at it. And I thought second half our performance, apart from a couple of isolated incidents, mm. we dominated the second half. I thought the goals were good, Harvey's especially, yeah. but he did miss an absolute sitter, in my opinion, <laughs> before that. And we could have won it. So we've just given full marks to the lads and it's up to us now to get back on base on Tuesday and give a good account of ourselves against Burgess Hill. You say about the goals that's been conceded, Jack. I don't like to, to single out goalkeepers I played in goal myself but Dan Lincoln again was he at fault for the first one in your eyes um I think Dan would admit himself he could have most probably done better on both the goals but um uh, I thought we could have done maybe a bit better with heading it what we're having a problem with at the moment every time we give a free kick away and a ball comes in we look vulnerable and we need to address that problem but you know, he's proved in the past he's a good goalie. I think one of the problems we have is the fact that I shouldn't think he's doing a lot of training at the moment due to, don't forget, in past years he's been training at Portsmouth and playing for us. I don't know what he's doing at the moment and that's something we've got to address. But um, uh, I'm just delighted because a point away from home is always a good point. I'm delighted to get a point and we move forward. And it, 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 today's result is great, provided we win on Tuesday. We talked about Tuesday's result with Robbie. I want to ask one thing about you, Jack, and about some of the personal criticism that, that's come in um, as the week's progressed on social media and on the Rocks Radio. What's your view on personal criticism? They can give me as much as they like. If that's what gives them satisfaction, then I don't mind amusing people that I don't have a lot of respect for. It's as simple as that, really. I mean, say, I respect people that have played the game. I respect people that have managed in the game. And I respect supporters that understand it and understand the game. And really, the people that make the comments they do, it's like anything in football. We all got comments. What I learned many years ago, unless you know all the facts, it's best to um, uh, not. But we pray social media has created a wonderful vehicle. I think it's a great vehicle, but it's also a wonderful vehicle for people to be anonymous, make all the criticisms, be like, and most of the time I laugh at their their um, analysis it, it, when I get told it, because I don't read it too much myself, and it don't bother me one iota. They're absolutely, to be fair, wasting their time if they think any of their criticisms gives me a bad time. It doesn't bother me one iota, and all the time they're criticising me, um, they're leaving the players alone. <laughs> but what they do understand is the one thing that upsets me more than anything is when they sign off loyal supporter. Because when you talk like they do, you'd be surprised how difficult it becomes then to try and sign players when they think you should be signing players. And I understand the thing that we're not a big enough squad. I fully understand that. And I'd like to have a bigger squad. But 
are starting 12, 13 of very good players. And what you have a situation is, it's very hard to get people due to our financial and geographical position to actually come to the club and play. It's even 10 times more difficult when you say to them and they say to you, I live 30 miles away, where are you going to play me? Well, I'm not, I'm going to put you on the bench. Mm. So you're not going to pay me much money. You wanted me to do 60 mile round trips three times a week, 180 miles. And my reward for coming is most probably to sit on the bench. Mm. And the players that would displace our players are earning far more money than our existing players. Now, if one of those wonderful writers on the web can un give me the answer to that, because the one thing I note they're not very good at naming the names of the people that actually would improve us. They're very good at saying, we need this, we need that. And I don't disagree with that. I'd love to have a bigger squad. But they're not very good at naming the people who it's to come. But let them carry on, because I must be the only manager in the country that can have lost one out of 12 competitive games and still the supporters think, or a few of them, think I'm a Muppet. But that's life. That's life, oh, and, and if it gives them humour and it keeps them happy, um, te but tell them it don't get under my skin, it don't make me angry, I'll laugh at their incompetence, basically, and uh, their lack of knowledge of the game. Cheers, Jack, always a pleasure, thank you. No problem. Uh, don't forget, in past years, he's been training at Portsmouth and playing for us. I don't know what he's doing at the moment, and that's something we've got to address. But um, uh, I'm just delighted, because a point away from home, is always a good point. I'm delighted to get a point and we move forward and it, 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 today's result is great provided we win on Tuesday. We talked about Tuesday's result with Robbie. I want to ask one thing about you, Jack, and about some of the personal criticism that, that's come in um, as the weeks progress on social media and on the Rocks Radio. What's your view on personal criticism? They can give me as much as they like. If that's what gives them satisfaction, then I don't mind amusing people that I don't have a lot of respect for. It's as simple as that, really. I mean, say I respect people that have played the game, I respect people that have managed in the game, and I respect supporters that understand it and understand the game. And really, the people that make the comments they do, it's like anything in football. We all got comments. What I learned many years ago, unless you know all the facts, it's best to um, uh, not. But we pray social media has created a wonderful vehicle. I think it's a great vehicle, but it's also a wonderful vehicle for people to be anonymous, make all the criticisms, be like, and most of the time I laugh at their their um, analysis it, it, when I get told it, because I don't read it too much myself. And it don't bother me one iota. They're absolutely, to be fair, wasting their time if they think any of their criticisms gives me a bad time. It doesn't bother me one iota. And all the time they're criticising me, um, they're leaving the players alone. <laughs> but what they do understand is the one thing that upsets me more than anything is when they sign off loyal supporter. Because when you talk like they do, you'd be surprised how difficult it becomes then to try and sign players when they think you should be signing players. And I understand the thing that we're not a big enough squad. I fully understand that, and I'd like to have a bigger squad. But our starting 12, 13 are very good players. And what you have a situation is, it's very hard to get people, due to our financial and geographical position, to actually come to the club and play. It's even 10 times more difficult when you say to them and they say to you, I live 30 miles away, where are you going to play me? Well, I'm not, I'm going to put you on the bench. Mm. So you're not going to pay me much money. You wanted me to do 60 mile round trips three times a week, 180 miles. And my reward for coming is most probably to sit on the bench. Mm. And the players that would displace our players are earning far more money than our existing players. Now, if one of those wonderful writers on the web can un give me the answer to that, because the one thing I note they're not very good at naming the names of the people that actually would improve us. They're very good at saying, we need this, we need that. And I don't disagree with that. I'd love to have a bigger squad. But they're not very good at naming the people who it's to come. But let them carry on, because I must be the only manager in the country that can have lost one out of 12 competitive games and still the supporters think, or a few of them, think I'm a Muppet. But that's life. 
that's life. Oh, and, and if it gives them humour and it keeps them happy, um, te but tell them it don't get under my skin, it don't make me angry, I'll laugh at their incompetence, basically, and uh, their lack of knowledge of the game. Cheers, Jack. Always a pleasure. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Robbie Blake now uh, joins me for Rocks Radio. Robbie, a 2-2 draw, but I have to talk about the, the pitch. What was your, your view on it? Obviously, you come from a very high standard. What's your view on it? Um, listen, I understand from the club's point of view, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not acceptable. But, you know, that's not an excuse because we haven't won. Um, I just think there was... Alls in that pitch could be dangerous for the for the welfare of our players, and I think it should be something that they should look at. But listen, I understand the resources and the financial side of it does cause a problem, but um, you know it's not very good. But we're not going to use that as an excuse. Um, you've seen a hard-fought game there today, and um, I've just said to the boys they've got they can be really proud of themselves because to a man they were absolutely outstanding in the second half. What was said in the changing room at half-time, Robbie, obviously without the expletives, but what, what was the overriding message? Because it wasn't acceptable in the first half, was it? Yeah, you know what, Lee? Right? You look at games, right? And then they've had the co two corners when the lads made it later on, then we stopped that, and then they get a free header. Fine, that's a problem. Yeah, and then the second goal, it's Dan's side. Dan says it was a bit of a quagmire in there, so we've got to accept that. Should he get beat that side? Who knows? But the bottom line is we've conceded two goals from set pieces. Other than that, I thought we were in the game. It was a tough game, and we were in the game. So I don't think it was unacceptable first half. What is unacceptable is, at the minute, we're conceding sloppy goals. and Now, we've only got one clean sheet in the, in the league, but yet we're still sat in the playoffs. So that's a really good positive. We've got to iron out them little insecurities at the back in terms of making sure we're first to the ball we need to make that first contact in the in the boxes in both boxes be it if we make the first contact we will stop goals going in and if we make the first contact in the opposition half we will score more goals than other people so um as to the second half we just said listen keep going we had a game plan was to get it forward a little bit quicker a little bit sooner which we did that but i think you've seen lee in my opinion in the second half, I thought we were absolutely, absolutely top draw. And not, I'm not saying we've completely dominated. There's other ways of looking at it. We're never going to dominate passing the ball on that pitch. But we adjusted to it and we scored two goals in the second half. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, showed a lot of, we showed a lot, a lot, a lot of bollocks, shall we say. Um, and, that's, and I've said to them lads in there, I said, you know, excuse the language, because <laughs> I said to them, I can look at them in the eye now, and I know for a fact, as a player, you want to trust your coach and you want to trust your manager. I can look as a coach and as a manager and say, I trust every single one of them players now after that performance. And I'm, people might say, well, that's a bit of a reaction. I mean it because they were um, absolutely outstanding and the response they give us was first class. Obviously, we don't have a bleep machine like we'll be going in, Robbie, but all joking aside, I actually thought Pot and Spar scored three goals. Because Tommy Block, how on earth did he get back to get that offline? Because for me, I thought that was in. Yeah, no, he's, but that's just going, going to show that people are running for the cause and running for this football club and they'll do anything they can at certain areas to, to stop a goal going in. And that's what people have to do. We have to sacrifice certain things and we have to run together and we have to we have to fight together. And that was a second half battle and performance. And I think we really deserved the two. Um, yeah. the 2-2 two -two score it's just sometimes in defence we've got to switch on a little bit because with that much in the ascendancy with that much dominating what the defenders have got to do is first and foremost realise that the defenders so we've got to have one in front and one behind and that stems from them nearly scoring the goal because we've got that much dominance in the game that we switched off defensively and we've allowed the lad to play the ball when a 2v1 situation for us and it causes a problem but I think like you say the lads are young and they're learning and um, there's so, so many positives. I, 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 listen, the only negative thing is the result in terms of uh, two all. But I think over it, there's so, so many positives to take out of that league. Coming off the back of a really disappointing on yeah. Tuesday, having that travel, they showed so much, so much character and courageousness. And I'm, I'm really proud of them. Robbie, let's talk about Keaton. It's obviously minutes after the game, but how bad is the injury looking? Because it didn't look good and he was yeah, off. Yeah, it didn't look good. The lads said on the pitch it didn't look good. So we'll, obviously we're after the assess it. But the one really positive was that Corey come on and done a really good job, I thought. I thought Corey was quite commanding, won a lot, lot of headers. Mm. Yes, he's still lacking minutes, but I'm pretty sure he'll top up that now. And he's got to go on Tuesday now and be ready to play. I've just told him that there. So um, 
you know, if it is geek news out, then obviously Corey's got a chance to, to get himself in the team. Well, we go again on Tuesday against Burgess Hill, a local derby, a couple of ex rocks in that lineup. It's going to be hopefully uh, an interesting crowd there on Tuesday under the lights of a nine camp. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's perfect, isn't it? Lights on the lights at home against, um, you know, a derby, which is fantastic. And I just think the response of them players, that should set them up for the next couple of games. We win these two back to back games at home. We know it's not going to be easy, but if we apply ourselves how we have in the second half, you know, we should have some positive outlooks and, um, you know, if six points in, in one week is, well, seven points, sorry, in one week hmm. in them three games is massive for us. Well, Robbie, pleasure as always. Safe journey home. Top man, Lee. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Thank buddy. you.